My name is Ted Eller. I'm with the Chicago Architecture Foundation. I moved to Chicago about 42 years ago. I practiced neurosurgery here for 30 of those years. Over the next few minutes, we're going to show you some iconic buildings and other structures and some abstract art in Chicago. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Welcome to Chicago and have a great week. I'm standing in front of the Chicago Fire Academy this morning. Behind me is a monument to the Chicago Fire, which started Sunday, October 8th, 1871, after a long, hot summer. It hadn't rained since July of that year, and there was a strong 30 mile an hour wind blowing out of the southwest. Mr. and Mrs. O'Leary's dairy barn stood at this very spot. That's where the fire got started. Once it was started, it raged out of control towards the lake and burned for about 36 hours. It burned about a third of the city down, made 100,000 people homeless, and burned down about 17,500 buildings. I'm standing in front of the Rookery Building, which is the oldest skyscraper in Chicago still standing. It was built in 1888. John Wellborn Root and Daniel Burnham were the architects. When it was built in 1888, it was the tallest commercial building in the world at 187 feet and 10 stories. This building is unique in many respects. It's 17 years since the fire, and the architects and engineers have figured out a way to build a tall building. This has involved new technologies such as steel framing, better fireproofing, steam heat, electric lights, plate glass, and telephones. All of those things had to come together to make something like this successful. In a few minutes, we're going to see another building called the Marquette, which was built in 1895. And you'll see by then, 24 years after the fire, the architects and engineers have settled on a form or a style for the skyscraper, which will look recognizable to you. I'm standing in front of the Marquette building, which is a real skyscraper. This was built in 1895. We're now 24 years after the Chicago fire. This was designed by Holabird and Root, two famous Chicago architects. Well, by now, 1895, we got something that really looks like a skyscraper. They figured out how to build a tall, safe commercial building. This is called the Chicago Commercial Style or Chicago School of Architecture. There really was no school here. It was just a successful solution to building a tall building. And it has several characteristics which you can appreciate on the uh, by looking at the building. First of all, the building is tripartite. That means it's built, the facade of the building is in three parts. You can see there's a lower part consisting of two stories. That's where the retail was done, big windows. Then there's a long shaft, 15 stories or so, of office offices. And then there's a fancy top called the cornice or capital. So that's one characteristic of the Chicago School, was it was three parts to the building. Another characteristic is that the underlying steel frame is expressed on the outside of the building by those bricks. Look at those long, narrow brick piers going straight up. It just brings our eyes up. The architect is playing a trick on us. He's saying, look how tall I can build my building. Importantly, this is one of the first group of really successful, fully steel framed skyscrapers in Chicago. After World War II, Mayor Richard J. Daley wanted to revitalize this area, and the best way to revitalize it was with modernism, which originated in Europe prior to World War II at the Bauhaus in Germany. And now we're going to look at what modernism is. It looks different, doesn't it? This doesn't look like the Marquette building. This is sleek, modern, an economy of style, minimalism. And this was made possible by Mies van der Rohe emigrating to Chicago in 1938. Mies became the architecture, uh, the, the head of architecture at the Illinois Institute of Technology and was very influential. Mies was the lead architect of the entire Federal Center, which we're standing on right now. So if we look at these modernist buildings, the reason they look different is they're minimalist. They have no ornamentation. They're absolutely uniform and regular from top to bottom. They're monochromatic, flat black and they have a curtain wall of glass. It's a structure which defines a volume, in other words. The buildings are also held up off the ground by these large columns called pelotes, which in French means stilts, and it gives the buildings a lightness, a feeling. The lobbies are all glass, and they're recessed away from the buildings. 
These are some of the characteristics that make modernism. In a few minutes, we're going to see probably the most famous piece of public uh, sculpture here in Chicago, and that's the Picasso. Okay, behind me is the Daly Center, and uh, the building is built on only one third of its uh, space here, so we have a large plaza, and on that plaza we have a large piece of public abstract sculpture. The architects had always planned on this. They wanted to show a modern design sculpture along with a modern design building. The architects voted on the sculptor and every it was unanimous, Pablo Picasso, the most famous uh, sculptor and uh, painter in the world at that time. The architects thought that a sculpture about 51 feet high would look uh, satisfactory against this very tall building. So Picasso made a maquette or a model that was 41 inches and he sent it to Chicago to be worked up to 51 feet. Picasso himself never visited Chicago. The maquette arrived, it was sent to the United States Steel Company, and they scaled it up to a little over 50 feet. Now the sculpture itself is abstract. It might be anything you might see in it. it it's up to you. It's titled Untitled. Some people say it looks like uh, Picasso's Afghan hound, whose name was Kabul. Actually, there are pictures of Kabul which look remarkably like this. The wings, so to speak, which come out from uh, the face of the sculpture appear to be a lot like the hair of his second wife, Jacqueline. This is called the Chicago Picasso. This has become the icon in the center of Chicago. I'm standing in front of the Trump Tower in Chicago which is now Chicago's second tallest building. It's 1,389 feet, second only to the Sears Tower. The Trump Tower was designed by Skidmore, Owens and Merrill, and specifically Adrian Smith and William Baker were the specific architects. It was built between 2005 and 2009. The Trump is a multi-purpose building. It has retail at the base, ballrooms and other meeting rooms, and then a approximately 20-story luxury hotel, and on top of the hotel, our condominiums up to the 89th floor. So what is it about contemporary skyscrapers that makes them different? Well, they don't fit into a rigid formula like the modernism buildings by Mies van der Rohe. These buildings are mostly computer-aided design, environmentally green, and free form in structure, and quite beautiful. I personally think this is one of the most beautiful skyscrapers in the world. I've lived in Chicago for 42 years now. I think it looks better than ever. I want to welcome everybody to Chicago, and I hope you all get a chance to see some of this beautiful architecture here.